Hey YouTube, welcome back to episode 7.5. This is Detroit coming to you from the bunker here in Rochelle Park, New Jersey with another episode of the YouTube Wars. All right, this is Axis and Allies, the garrison once again. All right, so it is China and the UK's turn. Sire Blood gets to make his moves. As always, Sire making very interesting, very challenging uh, moves on the game board that always, just always challenges us as opponents. All right, so... Japan, Imperial Japan, I tell you what, Japan is feeling the pressure, the pressure from the allies, okay? Uh, the fact that Japan had to come to the aid of its uh, European allies has definitely left Japan uh, somewhat vulnerable to the allied war efforts in Southeast Asia. Question that, that we all now have and that I have myself is, can Japan hold? Okay, with, with the loss of its air force, because the Japanese good number or a good chunk of the Japanese air force is somewhere else now uh, fighting the war effort on behalf of the allies. Can Japan without its air force hold the ground that it's gained in previous terms? We shall find out. Guys, as always, enjoy this episode and let me know what your thoughts are regarding this tactics and strategies. All right, YouTube, it is episode 7.5 and it is... The UK and China's turn, and as we know, Sire Blood is in command of both countries. All right, so it's uh, definitely getting very interesting. We are fast approaching the end of this game. We're more than halfway through round seven, and shortly we will be beginning round eight. All right, so let's go ahead first uh, with uh, some housekeeping. Uh, two errors that I made uh, during, uh, J during uh, the USA's uh, recap video. Uh, it turns out that season 36, okay, uh, the uh, two attacking U.S. subs were successful, obviously. They, one of them, though, did survive, okay, because of an error in, ter in interpretation on my end. Turns out that the U.S. sub, okay, uh, did survive. Hence, Bo, uh, the, the defending injured or damaged Japanese battleship, along with the defending Japanese submarine and naval transports, were sunk to the bottom of the sea. The U.S. in this attack only sustained only one loss, and that was the loss of a advanced submarine or super submarine. All right, the other error that I made was in Morocco. As it turns out, only one U.S. infantry division was lost and not two as I had stipulated earlier. Okay, so I'm reinserting one infantry division in Morocco uh, for the U.S. there. All right, so let's go ahead then with the purchases that the Chinese made. Chinese purchased six infantry divisions, totaling 18 IPCs. All right, so let's go ahead with the four battles that the Chinese will be declaring. Okay, and they are the battles of Kiangsu, Kwangtong, Yunnan, and Yunnan. Okay, Chinese will be mobilizing one light cavalry or light armored division heading south at a movement of one and two. That light cavalry or light armored division will blitz through Kiangxi and liberate Hong Kong. Okay, so the province of Kwangtong reverts back to the Chinese. All right, the third and fourth battles are the battles for Yunnan and Yunnan, where you have two light armored divisions heading south at a movement of one and two, both Yunnan and Yunnan are liberated and now are under the control of the Chinese nationalist forces. All right, and that's about it for the actual attacks for the Chinese. The Chinese will now make their non-combat movements and they will be as follows. All nine of the infantry divisions currently in Amway will move south and occupy Kiangxi. Okay, so that's a total of nine infantry divisions that have moved south into Kiangxi and as a uh, sire blood he refers to the, these nine divisions or this army group as the horde very good adjective there my, my friend all right so let's go ahead then with uh the final placements of the infantry divisions six of them that the chinese purchased all right so the chinese will be placing one infantry in Kiangxi okay and will place an additional five infantry divisions in Yunnan. So that'll be five in Yunnan infantry and two 
light armored divisions or cavalry divisions in Yunnan. And that about does it for the Chinese. And then into um, uh, the UK's turn. The UK started this turn with a total of 29 IPCs. It will purchase two infantry divisions, okay, one naval transport, one artillery, and two armored divisions for this turn. All right, the UK will only be declaring one battle, and that is the attack that will be taking place in Transjordan. This uh, attack will be a combination of air, naval, amphibious, and ground units that will be moving into from multiple territories surrounding Transjordan. So let's make those moves, all right? So the first attack will be, actually the only attack, but the first unit attacking will be the armored division coming in from Syria at a movement of one. Then you'll have an additional armored division coming in from Persia at a movement of one and two, all right? Then you have an additional third armor coming in from Anglo-Egyptian Sudan at a movement of one and two. And let's not forget that because of the heroics of the French Foreign Legion Division that attacked Egypt, okay, where it attacked a defending Italian ground infantry division defending at two. I believe it was an infantry. Could be wrong. But uh, it's it was this attacking French infantry division was uh, outmanned and outclassed, and yet it was able to defeat the Italian division that was defending. Uh, and this, of course, gives gives the British an additional armored division where now they can blitz through Egypt and into Transjordan. All right, a little bit of an explanation there of what occurred. All right, so you'll have one naval transport in C-Zone 81 picking up one artillery. Okay, it will be landing it in Transjordan as well. The naval transport in C-Zone 76 will pick up one infantry and one armor and it will move into C-Zone 81 and will link up with it, the attacking British uh, Army Group. Okay, that's for now, that's a total of four armor, one artillery, and one infantry. All right, in addition, you'll, that attack will be performed with it by, uh, will be assisted by an offshore naval bombardment of one cruiser. Okay, let me put that there. An additional cruiser coming from season 76. So that's two cruisers attacking the defending uh, Axis forces in Transjordan. And then you have a tactical bomber and a fighter squadron, a Spitfire fighter squadron coming from the aircraft carrier in season 81. Okay, so that's a total of one fighter, one tactical bomber, four armored divisions, one artillery, one infantry, and two offshore naval bombardments that will be attacking the defending axes, which consist of two Italian infantry divisions, four fighter squadrons, and one tactical bomber squadron that are defending uh, Transjordan. And that'll be the single attack that uh, the British will be making this turn. All right, so let's review the... Results of the battle that took place in Transjordan, uh, no surprise, uh, the British were able to defeat the uh, defending Axis forces, okay, as uh, all, all of these aircraft uh, and the two Italian defending infantry divisions, as well as the uh, four fighters and one uh, Japanese uh, tactical bomber were taken out, okay, so now... Uh, Transjordan has been retaken by the British. Uh, in turn, though, the British did sustain uh, losses also on the return uh, uh, Axis fire. They lost, uh, the British lost two armored divisions, one infantry and one artillery division on the Japanese uh, return fire. So, that a victory for the British here in Transjordan. So let's go ahead with the non-combat movements uh, and let's uh, land these uh, surviving uh, British aircraft. Okay, so the tactical bomber and fighter squadrons will move at a movement of three. Here we go. One, two. Okay. All right. So they will link up with the British 
a fleet consisting of a carrier and two destroyers coming from Sea Zone 81 at a movement of 1 and 2. So currently, these aircraft are on the British aircraft carrier in Sea Zone number 80. There we go. All right, so let's make uh, additional uh, uh, non-combat movements. The British destroyer in Sea Zone 76 will move and link up with the British fleet in Sea Zone uh, 80. Okay, uh, the, let me see, what else? Uh, the two, actually the three uh, uh, divisions in Eastern Persia, the two artillery and one infantry division will move into West India. They'll head east and occupy, actually not occupy because it's been liberated already. They'll just move into West India. Actually, I shouldn't say liberated. It was actually never taken by the Japanese. The Japanese chose not to uh, bother invading West India at all. And I believe, okay, no, I still have one more non-combat movement to make. And that'll take place in Scotland, where you'll have one infantry and one AAA moving south and will move into England. All right, so that's the last uh, non-combat movement that the British will make this turn. All right, so let's go ahead then with the final placements of units where you have two infantry moving into the Union of South Africa. I'm not moving, but being produced in the Union of South Africa. You'll have one naval transport being produced in Persia. So you'll have one naval transport linking up with the rest of the British fleet and an interesting placement. And here you have two armored divisions and one artillery piece being placed in Quang Tong. Okay. Good move. Power to uh, Sire. That's an a, a interesting um, uh, placement of forces. And uh, I like it. All right, guys. So the UK will be collecting a total of 36 IPCs that it will be carrying over to its uh, last turn in round eight. So that's a total of 36 IPCs. Uh, I like what the UK has uh, done here. Uh, this uh, fleet in Season 80 definitely uh, places Japan in somewhat of a pickle because now it directly threatens India, as well as the placement of these uh, uh, two armored divisions and one artillery in Quang Tong also threatens uh, the victory point objective of Southeast Asia. So definitely the squeeze is on uh, the uh, Japanese, on Imperial Japan. All right, guys, uh, as always, let me know what your thoughts and, uh, uh, and ideas uh, and opinions are regarding the strategies and tactics that we have been using uh, in this uh, conflict. As always, I look forward to hearing them. Don't forget, guys, to bunker down and play.